welcome everyone to our digital electronics two course uh, today's uh, discussion topic is about oscillators and this is part two uh, we have already finished the part one in last week first uh, look at the content so first topic is about tuned oscillator circuit then culprits oscillator Hartley oscillator crystal oscillator that's mean a uh, different types of oscillator and uh, finally the starting of power amplifiers we'll have uh, an overview of amplifiers and the remaining part will be discussed on the next week tuned oscillator circuit so we already know that uh, oscillator what is oscillator and here we will discuss about tuned oscillator types of circuit uh, you can see one figure here the amplifier is here and uh, some reactance element uh, for example it is uh, denoted as x1 x2 and x3 so they are connected in the output and also in the input and also in the feedback circuit path or in the biasing circuit path so uh, instead of x1 x2 and x3 we can uh, put the capacitor resistor inductor or uh, capacitor inductor both so uh, depending on the various types of uh, reactance element uh, it can be possible uh, to tune the input or output uh, the reactance and uh, in this way the output can be easily vary uh, so uh, the types of uh, these types of uh, oscillators are called pitch oscillator and the one is Hartley oscillator and another one is tuned input and tuned output. So when this x1, x2 and x3 you see that uh, the table here call for call pitch oscillator this x1 must be C that's when capacitor x2 must be capacitor and x3 this one uh, it is a uh, uh, inductor so two capacitor x1 x2 and if uh, x3 is an inductor then uh, this types of oscillator is called call pitch oscillator the next one is Hartley oscillator so if we if, if we use uh, inductor uh, for x1 inductor for x2 and capacitor for x3 that's been two inductor one capacitor instead of this x1 x2 and x3 uh, so that will be work as Hartley oscillator or it is named as Hartley oscillator and the last one is tuned input tuned output so for that x1 and x2 we need to uh, change with uh, some reactance element and that is LC that's when inductor and capacitor both so for x1 and x2 that is both LC and LC and x3 is nothing that's when there will be no connections on x3 so that will call tuned input tuned output so we'll discuss these types of oscillator in next slides call pitch oscillator uh, and the first is first part is FET fate call pitch oscillator that's when uh, this circuit is the combination of fate amplifier so previously saw that uh, here in oscillator we can use the amplifier but it is also possible to uh, combine the culprit oscillator with fate. So uh, in the circuit you can see that C1, C2 and the L. So this is the exactly the same uh, as like the previous one. That's why X1, X2 and uh, the X3. So instead of X1, X2, X3 we have used C1, C2 and L. So two capacitor, one inductor. And uh, rest of the inductor capacitor or the resistors are used to bias the fate amplifier that's means it is used for DC bias purpose so the supply voltage is VDD and in the middle this is the fate so instead of the uh, normal op-amp amplifier we can also use the fate uh, amplifier uh, for the call pitch oscillator so we can uh, build different ways uh, the call pitch oscillator so one kind of 
uh, is a fate of culprits oscillator. For fate culprits oscillator, the oscillator frequency uh, can be found from this equation. So F0 equals to 1 by twice pi root over LC equivalent. So the capacitor and the inductor when we need. So C equivalent, capacitor equivalent, uh, it is equals to C1, C2 divided by C plus, C1 plus C2. So the combination of C1 and C2 capacitor, so equivalent C capacitor equivalent we need to know and uh, that value can be used to find the oscillator frequency because this for oscillators, all kinds of oscillator we need to know the oscillator frequency that is the most important thing that uh, how with which uh, frequency we can generate the signal. I see called pits oscillator so another types of uh, culprits oscillator is IC culprits. So here in IC all culprits an op amp uh, is used in the middle. You can see this portion. So operation amplifier is used for the this types of uh, oscillators. And you see that the same connections like uh, the X1, X2 and X3. Uh, one capacitor C1, another C2 and another inductor L. So this three is for uh, reactance element and the rest of the uh, resistor uh, they are for basic amplifications that's mean for op amp we need to if we want to run the op amp we need to give some uh, feedback path so that is the rf and also the input resistance ri so that is for basic amplification and rest of the uh, feedback network is lc inductor and capacitor combination of that and uh, here also the equation is same that's mean oscillator frequency is same like the previous one and that is F0 equals to 1 by twice pi root over LC equivalent. So C equivalent is also uh, as like the previous one. So we need to find that using the C1 and C2. Hartley oscillator. So now another types of uh, oscillator and uh, here we will first look at the uh, fate Hartley oscillator, one types of Hartley oscillator. So what is Hartley oscillator? Already we know that if the basic uh, resonant elements are x1 and x2 if uh, inductors and x3 is a capacitor then the circuit is called a Hartley oscillator. So for Hartley oscillator here the circuit is shown the fate Hartley oscillator types. So fate means we are using one fate circuit in the middle this one not an open fate so the basic uh, resonant uh, x1 x2 you see that the inductors l1 and l2 and for x3 that is capacitor 1 and the rest of the uh, elements that's been the capacitor resistor uh, another cc capacitors inductors uh, they are used for biasing purpose like the previous one and plus vdd this is the supply voltage uh, for the fate circuit. Uh, fate Hartley oscillator, uh, if the inductors have a mutual coupling value and that is M, uh, so we need to uh, take it account uh, to find uh, the uh, frequency. So the frequency of oscillation will be F0 equals to 1 by uh, twice pi root of our L equivalent to C. So this is the frequency of oscillation for fate Hartley type oscillator and here the L equivalent is L1 plus L2 plus 2M. So this M is you know that I say that this is the mutual coupling value uh, between L1 and L2 inductors. Transistor Hartley oscillator. So in this type of Hartley oscillator transistor is used as the main uh, circuit and uh, here the tank circuit like the L1, L2 and capacitor is used as the basic elements R1, R, X1, X2 and the X3 
and here the rest of the things uh, rest of the elements are used for biasing purpose here the frequency uh, it is uh, f0 equals to twice 1 by twice pi uh, root over l equivalent into c the capacitor so you can find that uh, frequency of oscillation of this given circuit crystal oscillator uh, so other types of oscillator and so op-amp can be used in a crystal oscillator uh, in the crystal is connected in the series resonant path that's when one crystal is connected with the op-amp connections uh, and operates at the crystal resonant frequency so uh, this circuit has a high gain uh, and the output is uh, like the square wave signal and you can see that the here two Jenner diode is used that's been a couple of uh, Jenner diodes one this one one and the one is here so two is in opposite directions and the Jenner diode operates at its uh, own voltage and that is Vz so when uh, the, we will get the output from this op-amp and that will uh, come through the Jenner diode then the final output will be uh, square wave with the amplitude output amplitude at exactly the Zener voltage and that is Vz so whatever the Zener voltage is it may be 0.7 maybe 0.9 so output voltage will be also at Vz so uh, like the Zener voltage power amplifier so uh, till uh, now we have already uh, saw that different types of amplifiers but uh, they are very in small scale that's been very small signal can be generated from those types of amplifiers uh, so that amplifier receives signal from some pickup transistor or some other sources and uh, then provides a larger version that's when amplify the output signal to other devices or any other amplifier state so they are uh, generally the signals uh, is a uh, very small and uh, needs to be amplified sufficiently to operate the output the device so in a small signal amplifiers the factors are mainly the linearity of the amplification and also the magnitude of the gain so for uh, signal voltage and current are small on that types of amplifier so, but uh, uh, and for that reason the power handling capacity is very uh, little concern and power efficiency are not so hard uh, for voltage amplifier also they amplify the voltage primarily uh, they are not concerned about the power for the uh, large signal or for power amplifiers it is different here uh, the main concern is about the power because uh, uh, it needs a sufficient power to into the output signal to drive any speaker or other any power device for few watts to 10 us of watts that's when uh, it is need it needs a larger uh, amplification so to uh, provide sufficient output power to the devices in the output sections so the main features of a large signal amplifier are the circuit's power efficiency and the maximum amount of power uh, so that the circuit is capable of handling and also the matching impedance also amplifiers class so this is a one types of method uh, to categorize the amplifiers uh, then and that is a by class that's when amplifier can be categorized as uh, in different ways but one way is by class and what is this class this class actually represent how uh, the amount of the output signal varies over one cycle of operation for a uh, fixed input signal so uh, how this output signal is varying that is depending on that uh, the classes are categorized so first one uh, we'll discuss uh, about class a there are several types of class like class a class b class a b class c in this way so the first one is class a so you can see that the graph and figure a uh, that these types of uh, amplifiers the output signal varies for uh, a full 360 degree uh, in oh, for the input signal that's been from half cycle is here in for upper level voltage and uh, 
next half cycle is for lower level voltage so total full 360 degrees so this requires the q point to be biased at at a level so that uh, the half cycle uh, swing uh, of the output may vary up and also the rest of the half is uh, down without going to a high enough voltage uh, and that uh, may be limited by the supply voltage and uh, the zero level voltage you see here and the DC bias level is starting from in the middle point class A DC bias level and the supply is uh, so much high level so it may not touch the uh, total supply voltage but uh, may be the lower than that but at the full 360 degree output swing must happen in these types of uh, amplifier. Then the next class is class B amplifier. So in this type of class circuit, it provides an output signal varying over only uh, the one half uh, the input signal cycle and that is for 180 degree of signal. So the output uh, swing only 180 degree signal. And you see that the class DC bias level is zero voltage and from that only half portion is uh, achieved. So rest of the half cycle is not there. So that is uh, not uh, the uh, things that we want. So for that we need the full half cycle, not the only half cycle, we need full cycle. So to reproduction of the full cycle, we need to provide another class B, that's been two class B. One will provide the positive half cycle, another will provide the a negative half cycle so in this way with the connections of with the combination of a 2b class b operations we will get the 360 degree of operation and that is uh, that types of connection is referred to as a push pull operation so uh, in this class b operation it gives a very distorted output signal because you see that the reproduction of the input takes place on the for 180 degree output Another amplifier class is class AB. Uh, for this type of amplifier, it is used two types conditions, two types biasing condition. Uh, for that, uh, uh, for zero base current level of class B and above one half the supply voltage level of class A, uh, both condition is made for class AB. So class AB operation requires a push-pull connections to achieve the uh, full output cycle. Uh, and DC bias level is usually closer to the zero bias current level for better power efficiency. So for this uh, class AB operation, uh, the output signal swing between uh, the 180 degree to 360 degree. So in between that because of class A and because of B combination of AB. So not the same as A or not the same as only B. It is a uh, combination of A and B. Another amplifier class C. Uh, for class C, the output is biased for operation at less than 180 degree. So it is very small amount of output it gets uh, and it will operate only with a tuned circuit. So the combination with uh, the tuned circuit which provides a full cycle of operation. Uh, so this types of uh, amplifier is used uh, in radio or communications purpose. Another one is class D. Uh, this operating class is a form of uh, amplifier operation using pulse signal. So only for short interval of times and the rest of the times uh, uh, it remains off for longer interval. So using digital techniques, that's when using the pulse signal, um, it is possible uh, to obtain a signal that varies over the full cycle and uh, to recreate the output from many pieces of input signal. So the major advantage of this uh, is that the amplifier is in on state only for short intervals and uh, it uh, represents the overall efficiency uh, is uh, very high. Amplifier efficiency. Uh, so we know that the efficiency of an amplifier it is defined as the ratio between the power output and the power input. That's when uh, efficiency is equal to output power divided by input power. And uh, this value, the, that's mean the efficiency, improves from uh, going from class A to class D. So it is, um, efficiencies are very less in class A, but higher in class D. We can see that uh, in class A amplifier, the 
uh, with a DC bias at uh, one half the supply voltage level it uses a good amount of power to maintain the bias and that reason uh, the efficiency is very poor uh, for class B operation uh, the maximum efficiency uh, reaches uh, almost 78.5 percent and for class D operation uh, it is possible to reach uh, over 90 percent uh, of the efficiency of total power Uh, and uh, since uh, for AB it is false between A and B, so the efficiency varies between 25% or 50% and in between 78.5%. Uh, so here is the table uh, that uh, summarizes the operation of the various amplifier classes. You can see that for A, A, B, B, C and D, different types of class, uh, the operating cycle, that's mean how much it is operating, full cycle or half cycle, and the power efficiency. So for A class, the operating cycle is 360 degree and the efficiency varies from 25 to 50%. And for AB, uh, it is from 180 degree to 360 degree and efficiency is between 25% and or 50% and 78.5 because it is combination of A and B. So for B, it is the uh, operating cycle is 180 degree and the efficiency is 78.5. And for C, it is less than 180 degree operations. And for D, it is a pulse operation, so not the degree. So the uh, efficiency is very high, that is typically over 90%. And uh, C is usually not used for delivering large amounts of power, so efficiency is not given here. In class B operation, a push to connection is also. Um, can be possible to maintain and for that reason we need we can use a transformer coupling or uh, using complementary uh, operation with uh, NPN and PNP transistors so it is also possible to couple the NPN and PNP transistors for, to provide operation on opposite polarity cycles uh, and though the uh, transformer can provide opposite cycle signals but transformer itself is a quite large in applications so transformer less circuit is uh, complementary transistors and that provides the same operation in a much smaller packets self-directed learning of this week uh, the question is compare between class a and class b amplifier so we have already learned uh, different types of amplifier so you need to compare between this uh, class A and class B amplifier and I write uh, this question's answer into the forum. So that's all for this week. In, in this week we have forum and uh, the, the quiz. So please participate on that. And uh, please remember that in next week, that's been in the 12th week, uh, we'll have that term paper. I will upload it on next week or by uh, Sunday so you can answer it from Monday hopefully and you will get approximately 7 to 10 days depending on the uh, final decision that uh, how long it will be open to answer the uh, term paper questions. You need to submit the term paper answer script uh, into the forum that will be uploaded on the under week 12. So you will have uh, different questions uh, you need to answer it and please submit the uh, term paper or the assignment uh, in handwritten format and also definitely uh, in PDF format, not any Word file or in JPG format. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you.